breastfeeding her three-year-old son on the cover of this week's Time magazine has sparked a furious debate over what's known as attachment parenting. The cover photo shows 26-year-old Jamie Lynn Grunet alongside the headline, Are You Mum Enough? So is it just raising a legitimate debate about child nurturing or being deliberately sensationalist in order to sell magazines? With me now, Denise Sumter, who says she believes in natural term breastfeeding, and Charlotte Fairclough from the Centre for Parenting Studies at Kent University. And um, Denise, you, you are currently feeding a four-year-old. I am, yes, that's right, yes. And um, I think the article, and the image especially, is wonderful. It's out there. Time has travelled around the globe overnight, and I've seen the internet traffic, and it's wonderful. You know, and all the attachment parents and mothers that, that I know are celebrating. Is, is attachment parenting basically just about breastfeeding? Or, or um, is there a lot more to it? There's, well, breastfeeding is, is one as aspect of it. But um, let me say first of all that nobody invented attachment parenting. Looking after your child, you know, keeping your child close, nurturing it in a way, in, in the way that attachment parenting uh, mothers do, is something that we've done since, you know, the beginning of time, since humans walked the, the planet. And, and so, will you stop your child breastfeeding? at any point in time, or will you just let her carry on as long as she wants? Um, I will let her carry on as long as she wants. I will follow her lead. She has, she knows her what she needs. So seven, eight, um, ten, uh, he's, he's, ca he's I mean, counting, um, you know, a lead knows no age, you know. Figures are, are kind of arbitrary. What do you think of, of this? Is it a good or a bad idea? I think, um, what the sort of time cover shows and what the debate we're having is, you know, really pointing to is how the way in which women feed their children and sort of look after them um, has become a very, very moralised kind of issue. Is there anything wrong with what they're doing there? No, I mean, there's, there's, there's no evidence. I mean, I'm a sociologist, I'm not uh, a psychologist, but there's, I mean, as far as I'm aware, there's no evidence about, you know, attachment parenting being damaging in a psychological sense. Um, on the other hand, there's no evidence to say that non-attachment parenting is damaging either. I mean, that's the key, isn't it, Denise? I mean, do you think children who don't get this, this kind of parenting are disadvantaged in any way? Um, I think um, each child, each mother, finds their own way. Um, I think it, it's great. I know. Or... Um, it, it's, uh... I, mean, I know you don't want to attack women. You don't want to be judgmental about women. But no. you do think it's best for the child, then, to do what you um, do? I advocate for ch children. And, you know, as I said, we're mammals. This is what we do. We breastfeed the same as any other mammal on the planet. Charlotte? That is true, we are mammals, but I think unlike you know, every other species of animals, humans uniquely have sort of learned how to manipulate their environment in a, you know, a particular way. And so I think you know, the idea that uh, actually intervention in a kind of natural process is inherently a bad thing is a very simplistic way of looking at it. And I think as well, what I don't really like about um, this cover is what it, what it does is it sort of puts individual people's decisions um, as against each other, so it pits them against each other, when actually how you can feed your baby or you know, how you sleep with your baby or whatever, is, um, it's a much broader social question. Seeing policies or flexible working or any one of number of issues. Are you, are you saying it basically doesn't make any difference to the child, and that, that it's just about individual choices? I think in a, in a developed country like the UK, for example, you know, um, with sort of the breastfeeding, bottle feeding debate, or whether you use a push chair or a, a baby carrier, a sling, or whatever, a lot of the evidence is kind of overplayed. Um, it's actually a lot more ambiguous than some advocates might um, suggest. Because a lot of people on your side of the camp kind of think that's an irresponsible well, message, don't you? Um, for instance, if you take the renowned um, anthropologist Kathy DeTyler's um, research, you know, she says, of course, you know, this is what we've done around the planet, um, through history, and there's a difference, I mean, between technology um, and between a species, a living being. But, you know, um, there's a few hundred years, you know. We kind of need to get to the crunch of this, which is that in, in the Western world, isn't it true that a lot of people think it's but that's distasteful? They don't want to see that. But, but and that's, that's the issue we're really grappling with But they're happy to look at a page, you know, of a woman scantily clad in a, in a you know, in a, a underwear, which is exactly the same. You can see a lot... Um, less breast there than you can there. But Charlotte Fairclough, I mean, what, what, how is it we've got to this situation where in the developing world it's perfectly normal for women to breastfeed, you know, four or five year old children. And in this part of the world, that is regarded as abnormal. 
And I guess it, it sort of depends on you know your ideas around feminism and ideas about gender equality. I mean, obviously, uh, if you're going to be breastfeeding for five years, that's going to have sort of implications for the other kind of choices. Do you think that's abnormal? I think I'm an anthropologist, so obviously, you know, what abnormal is a kind of very uh, you know plastic term. You, you actually hit the nail on the head when you talk about feminism and choices, because you know a lot of people pit mothers against each other by by saying. By saying, absolutely, by saying that, you know, if you're breastfeeding, you, you'll be out of the job market. I've heard the phrase, you know, you'll be economically inactive while you're breastfeeding. That's absolutely not the case, you know. When you're breastfeeding you're feeding your child, you're actually saving the government, uh, society, money, because your child is going to have benefits. They're going to get less ear infections. But isn't, isn't, it, isn't it true that women who need to go back to work mm -hmm. a few months after having a baby, don't have the kind of choice available to them that you say to them. Well, it depends. As I, as I often say, it takes a whole society to breastfeed a child. If the right measures were in place, then... Well, so wet mothers, nurses and everything. Wet nurses are marvellous, you know. We're better human milk than any other kind of milk. It's, it's absolutely tailored to our, a child's needs. Denise Sumter, Charlotte Fairclough, thank you both very much. After the break, the best...